everybody good morning this is Jean here from true love quilts for you um, my last video my last few videos I've been telling you that I'm going to be doing a cheater cathedral windows quilt tutorial um, if you've been following you know you saw that I had made and that I had exhibited uh, my quilt my uh, color madness quilt at a recent quilt show um, this is a queen size quilt a small queen size quilt um, took so much fabric shocking amount of fabric shocking shocking amount of fabric um, if you want to go on in my uh, on on, uh, on YouTube to Angela Walters the midnight quilt show um, she has a a very fast efficient <laughs> clever tutorial on how she made um, not quite this I changed it up a little but this this pillow she makes two pillows she has the um, the uh, instructions on how the fabric yardage for two pillows it's quite a lot I haven't shown you how to do that I have shown you in the following tutorial how to how I have made that that quote how I have made this little pillow top I haven't turned it yet into a pillow yet I, I was debating whether or not to actually um, show you a, in the, on this tutorial how to do a pillow how I'm gonna make it into a pillow I'm going to but that's for that's to come how I just make it into a pillow very simple but for now I'm concentrating on the actual construction of this cheating cathedral windows uh, quilt tutorial little pillow um, I as you can see I've used tons of different fabrics you can change it up this is a a, um, a cheating method because the original cathedral windows to uh, quilt made in the 30s 20s 30s 40s is a an origami type of fabric folding that's done by hand usually done with muslin 30 40 yards of muslin and then just the colorful piece in the the, the picture in the in the um, frame here um, and it's all folded and done by hand um, and therefore <coughs> because excuse me it doesn't have backing or batting this quilt has raw seams this construction method is row by row and it has raw seams so obviously my quilt that you've seen um, that was at the quilt show I backed it and I had batting in it and it was a heavy quilt I actually used a wool batting which is much lighter weight but very warm this is if you're going to turn make this into a quilt there's a lot a lot of fabric involved my quilt took 40 yards of fabric my queen size quilt it took uh, uh, 2200 pieces of white fabric that you'll see four inch squares it took uh, 480 of the background squares or and hundreds and hundreds of, of pieces of fabric in this quilt so um, again as I said Angela Waters gives the uh, the um, fabric requirements I just but that's for two pillows I and it's for she made it different this is what I did and you can see what I cut out of my fabric to make this pillow it's it, it'll finish at a 20 inch square I have a 20 inch square form um, there's no borders or anything um, but I show you in my following tutorial how I made this it's not hard um, it's tedious and you do need free there's no curved piecing it's all circles right you're thinking what there's no curved piecing whatsoever except to top stitch this bias edge if you followed along and did my 10 minute quilt block you'll see how this is done this is a bias edge frame the way it's constructed follow and then you just need a bit of top stitching take it steady I even think a beginner can do this be with careful with careful I like to think I'm doing things for beginners and I hopefully I broke it down for you um, that a beginner quilter could make this little pillow by all means if you just wanted to do um, it, again if you just wanted to do that little area right there to make maybe a pot holder or something it's it's constructed by blocks in rows and then the magic happens so follow my tutorial um, and you'll be able to make this yourself.
different colorways. And if you do it, I would love you to send me some pictures, truelovequiltsforyou at gmail.com, um, to see your creations with your different fabrics. I'm color mad, so I did my color madness. So um, I hope you enjoy the tutorial to follow, folks. And again, thank you for watching me. So here we are, ready to make a small version of my large color madness quilt. Now, as, as you see up close, I have used polka dot fabric for my background squares. Um, how we're going to make this, this, I'm going to be making a, a pillow top or a small quilt that you could even border with um, ab about 20 inches square, okay? Just about 20 inches square. Uh, approximately and what I used for my quilt here there's three different fabrics that I used I used a background dotted fabric I used the white for the frame this turning frame here and I used this picture fabric here okay now this is what I'm I've used um, I have to take my white fabric this is my white frame fabric now I would recommend that you don't get a really excellent, excellent white fabric because there's, you're going to be, um, um, you're going to be, um, this is going to be turning a lot. There's going to be a lot of fabric here. So what I got, I got a very nice quality white muslin. I got a white muslin. I didn't spend a lot of money on a very expensive white or tone on tone fabric. I used a white muslin because we're doubling it and we're quadrupling it. And that made a nice substantial white frame for my quilt. So this is what I'm using. I'm using a white muslin fabric for this frame. Now, you're going to be cutting for our pillow or for our little quilt here, you're going to be cutting 72 four inch squares okay out of this fabric you're going to be cutting 72 four inch squares now i had got i will come to the the uh quilt the uh cutting later this is wide this is 108 wide muslin i had gotten or 90 90 inch wide muslin so i'm going to be cutting from this fabric here um my 72 four inch squares but by all means if you got 45 inch that's fine you're going to just be cutting with your rule rotor, rotary cutter and your ruler your 72 inch four inch squares now for my dotted fabric here for my background as as you can see this background fabric i had gotten this these were these are my fabrics that I have used for this quilt here and I had also re I had also used in this quilt a, a, a charm pack which this is from Maywood Studios this is called beautiful basics there's 42 charm squares in this pack and they are dotted okay these are dotted fabrics that's what that's the whole point these are dotted and then I had pulled these from my stash larger polka dots all different all different fabrics all different dotted fabrics okay now out of these they, they're just scraps and or fat quarters from these dotted fabrics here um and from my charm squares I'm going to pull some pretty colors that I like the pinks I like the oranges I'm going to be cutting 36 four inch squares that's again to make this quilt here to look like this quilt here with my dotted background now by all means if you wanted to make this very traditional you could forget the dotted fabric forget the dotted fabric and just make this white you would need a lot more um a lot more yardage of your white fabric because you you have to cut your four inch squares you would have to cut your four inch squares for your background but I am I want you to see I'm making this ex almost exactly like this here this dotted fabric in fact you could use any fabric if you wanted to use a black background or a gray background um, or more of a neutral background by all means you could but I'm using the dotted and you're going to be cutting 36 four inch squares so I'm going to be doing that I'm going to be cutting the, my charm pack down I'm going to choose some pretty colors and I'm going to be cutting these squares down which are these are five inch squares I'm going to be cutting these down to um, four inch squares now for my pictures which is this fabric here 
there's two ways to do it you can again in, in the construction phase i'll be showing you um i'll be showing you either way to do this but for now you can either cut 18 i have a whole bunch of charm squares here all different for again from uh, this is what i had pulled my bright fabrics here i'm using a bright palette but um by all means just get charm squares or scraps of bright fabric you either need 18 or 25 and i will tell you why i've done it 18 18 squares or 25 squares that's because if you want these in the corners to be sort of the same the same you only need 18 but if you want all of these different which i did i cut 20 I, you would cut 25 and again when it comes to showing you how i'm piecing that i'll show you so it's either 18 or 25 depending four and a quarter inch squares you're going to be cutting your charm packs four and a quarter that is this picture in this rolled frame here so that is our cutting for our quilt uh, for our little pillow here you're going to be needing your three fabrics and that is your cutting instructions i'm going to be i'm going to go and cut my 72 four inch squares now i'm going to cut these to four inch squares my 36 and i'm going to cut these to my four and a quarter inch squares and then i'll be back um, I just wanted to I just wanted to demonstrate um, I what how I'm going to be cutting my fabric as you can see this fabric here am I in the frame yeah this fabric here is I believe 90 inches wide this is just white you can almost see through it it's a decent quality muslin fabric which I would recommend you get don't don't use your excellent fabric uh, your excellent white fabric that you've spent nine ten dollars a yard on um, uh, the white muslin the white muslin, if that's what you're choosing, is is absolutely fine because we're using it in, um, we're rolling it in quite a few layers. So this is how it comes. There's a fold up here. I've squared it up here, and now what I'm doing is I'm making sure everything's square and on my mat. I'm going to be this. There's four layers here. One two three four if you use extra wide i like sometimes to use extra wide fabric um because it's in in cases like this it's less expensive and it's it's uh the quality is absolutely fine and anyway so now i'm going to just line everything up here on my mat i will neaten this edge here i have my I have one ruler here and I'm just going to neaten this up. I'm going to follow my um, the lines here and the lines here are nice and straight. Now there's um, actually I will I will just do a I'll just do um, actually I was in the groove. Uh, I will do my um, this rotary cutter because my martelli might not cut through. Well, maybe see. May cut through all of these. Oh yeah, it did. Uh, my martelli ruler is better than that one. And this is like eight, what eight, eight things of fabric. Now that edge is beautifully neatened up. But what I do, um, and I'll get this one here. How I uh, this is again my beginner's 101. How I cut my how I cut my things. Everybody does cuts their things different. But I use my mat. My 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 lines are nice and straight here right there I want four inch squares I always use two rulers I have my either my I either have my um th this ruler this is a an Ulfa ruler and a Fisco and an Ulfa cutter um rotary cutter or I like to use my Fiskars rotary rotary cutter and ruler combined and then what I do is I use two if you follow along you know that I use two rulers so I want there there you go four inch squares I will line up against my this is nice and lined up here, nice and straight. And then I'll take my other ruler and I'll find my four inch mark. I'll go up there, there's my four inch mark. I go down here, there's my four inch mark. Everything's nice and straight. I'm going to be cutting a four inch strip. Now, my ruler, as you can see, my cutter, pretty much cuts this quite beautifully into a, into a lovely four inch strip. Now, I need 72. I'll probably have to do another one. I'll just continue. I'll just cut a few strips here because when I open them up, I, I'm going to have to obviously sub cut these strips. So for now, I should be able to figure out the um, the uh, uh, yardage. But for now, yeah, my ruler's doing a beautiful job. 
I'll just cut two and then I'll I'll continue. Now this is again, this is how I subcut. So I'll just open that up like that. And I'll put the I'll put the fold down here. Making sure everything's lovely and straight. As it sort of comes from the bolt. Scratch it all together. Scratching it on my mat. Not worried about this end too much right now. Putting it all together like that. Now I will just, with this one, I'll just neaten this up. I'll neaten this edge up and take off those selvages. And then I'll do it with this ruler here. I'll go and I'll find my four inch. I know these are four inches, both of them. So I'll go find my four inch square. And I'll just start subcutting. I like the two ruler method. This is nice and straight on my mat. I like the two ruler method. And I just continue. my four inch squares and as you can see when you're using wide fabric you can cut a lot of squares I'm finding my four inch line and then down here and let me just see they may be four oh yeah I can just cut these, this end one, into four inch squares over here. This is a nice neat edge. Get my ruler so I don't waste any. And there's four inches right there. So now I have, in just those few cuts, there's four let me see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 times 4 is, I don't know what, but I'll figure that out. But there are the beginnings, or is that right? Is that right? No, I don't have enough yet. Um, my 72 inch, but look how quickly that was when I used my wide white fabric. But by all means, you can just do it. Um, and you know you can just have that with a regular regular a regular width fabric so I'm just going to continue cutting my fabric until I get 72 four inch squares here I've cut a lot more <laughs> but by there's my 72 or however many four inch squares from my fabric it only took me a little while now from your charm squares or from your scrap fabric or from wherever um, you want to pull out some bright to make again to, to look like my quilt what I'm going to do is I'm just going to randomly pull some very bright uh, some there's some dark um, I, I would think like a smaller a smaller print would go well all different colors um, I'm just going to start pulling randomly some some lovely fabrics there's a bit of a uh, no, I don't want it that dark here's a nice pretty light one like this one so what I'm going to do is I for my quilt here I'm going to pull I'm going to pull 25 pieces of little of, of my charm squares here I'm going to pull 25 of varying varying colors here as you can see so if you have scraps by all means um, by all means just use some scraps but as you can see for my bright color for quilt um, they had it was all sorts of colorways so I'll just and I have a, I've, I have them um, from different manufacturers so it really changed up the look as you can see and I quite like I uh, quite like the like the patterns so what I'm going to do is I'll start uh, that's a yeah that's pretty the gray and here's a nice green there's a nice green. So what I'll do is I'll, can, I'll find my 25, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to, right off of the charm square, I'm going to uh, line these up pretty good. I'm going to line these up, do three or four at a time, scratch them together. These have pink edges. I'm not bothered about that. 
what I have here is my, again, my Omni Grip ruler here. This is just a um, six inch ruler. What I do is I just sort of square that up on a on the, my mat. They're pretty good. And I just find my four and a quarter and my four and a quarter. And I just go onto that. I go onto that line there and that line there. Sort of turn the on the outside, make it slightly bigger as opposed to making it smaller. And then what I do is with my rotary cutter, open up my rotary cutter, I hold it carefully and then I just slice off slowly and I have my four and a quarter inch squares. I will continue doing that until I have 25 for me. You can either make 18 or 25 four and a quarter inch squares from your scraps or from your charm squares. Here is our pile of white squares. Now I must admit, I only did, I only did a few at a time. Um, as you saw on my big quilt, I did, I did, uh, I believe it was 2,000, 2,200 of these, and I just did a few at a time. I, I cut some, and I, I was telling you at the beginning of this video, I cut some, uh, and then I would go, and I would do this, and I would make some blocks, and I would come back. What you're going to do, and again, there's no right or wrong side to this white muslin, very, very carefully, you're going to just iron these, and you're going to iron them, or press them, or whatever it is you do, into just on the diagonal. As you can see, they've been cut really well. This is a very important, you know, this is a very important step to iron these as, as flat and as on the diagonal as you can. I haven't pressed this, so I'm going to press it before I iron it. Really match these ends up and get a nice crisp point. If you've cut them perfectly at the four inches, You'll have no trouble. They won't skew at all. And by all means, I don't have a steam iron, or I do have a steam iron, but I don't use steam. By all means, if you have a steam iron, to really make these lovely and flat. So I am just going to start pressing. I'll probably may maybe do 12 of them or so. Um, and and uh, Because what we're going to end up with, we're going to end up with two of these pieces of fabric, two of these white white frames to one of our polka dot background fabric. That will be the next step in the uh, construction of our either either your quilt or your pillow. This was not hard to do. It was just tedious as you see. There's just a lot of a lot of uh, cutting and a lot of preparing and then um, I'll show you how we sew it. But as you can see, my four inch squares have been cut perfectly, as perfect as an imperfect human can get them. And uh, they, they go on the diagonal really, really well. That point and this point, which you will find is very, very uh, important. I have um, pretty much ironed all of my my uh, four inch white squares on the diagonal really nice not not quite all of them now this is where it gets a little bit tedious that was tedious uh, but what we're going to do with our dotted background fabric our 36 four inch squares what we want to end up with is we're going to be taking two of our folded squares and you can see now why uh, a, a nice, just a nice quality white muslin is is um, is fine to use because we're it's we're going to be rolling it even so there's going to be four layers of fabric so you don't need a really great fabulous quality uh, good quality muslin but muslin is perfect for this job. What we're going to do is we're going to with the folded side with the folded edge towards the middle on the diagonal. We're going to be laying that folded fabric right on our four inch square. Now, as you can see, if it's been pressed and cut perfectly, it ends up with the fold in the middle, a lovely four inch square, uh, you know, f uh, f sandwich as it were. Now, what we're going to do is by all means you can pin this but what we're going to do is you're going to uh, you're going to secure these 
two these two folded diagonals um, around the edge of this square and you're wanting to just do it right on the edge like an eighth of an inch perhaps just about an eighth of an inch now I have the original pattern that Angela Waters says is to do all four sides which makes a lot of sense um when I met and perhaps this is where I went wrong let me just show you when I made my quilt here oh it's so flipping heavy <laughs> when I made my quilt I just made, I just made, um, I just sewed, um, I just sewed w one side and then another side. I did not sew, I did not sew all four sides. Here are some of the, I was saying here are some, whoops, here are some of the pieces that I have left over. I didn't sew all four of my, of my sides of my fabric, my, my, uh, you know, my white onto my, uh, background square. I just sewed two sides. But by all means, if you want to take the time, you can even chain piece these. You want to stitch, as you can see. I'm just close to the edge on all four sides, or I've just done it on two sides. But by all means, if you want to really secure that well, what you're going to be doing is now, again, it's fairly tedious, you're going to be taking this over to your machine, and you're going to stitch it these white pieces on all four sides or like me you can just do it on two sides again here we are we're going to take our lovely ironed bits we're going to take the folded into the core into the middle match up the corners nice and well if it's, if it's been cut nicely and the the edges are the most important to get nice and to get nice and uh stitched down so this is what I'm doing I have my pile of white folded fabric here and I have my dotted background fabric so I'm just grabbing a one dot one dotted background fabric I'm chain piecing these and I'm taking my my diagonal folded fabric carefully putting it into the corner and one more we need two for each square Keeping that aligned carefully, I'm picking up my presser foot so I'm catching the I'm catching this piece while I'm sewing down this piece. I'm just catching that piece and then sewing close to the edge just to secure it. Now, and I'm the reason I'm catching it is so then I they they they're they're um they're holding together, and then I can go back just for myself. By all means, if you want to sew all four sides, by all means, do that. As you can see, my corners are aligned. I'm picking up my presser foot, catching this top bit right there. So when I finish all of them, I'll, I'll, I'll show you. I'll pull this up. I'll cut my chains apart. So you can see my pieces are my two things are held together cut my chains apart being careful <laughs> and then I can go back I can go back and I can do the other side this side is this is this edge this point has been secured down and then I go to the top and I'm just securing that point down there I found that just by sewing down the two sides very carefully, aligning that corner point was okay. But again, if you want to sew down all four sides, by all means. So I'm just going to continue making these squares. And this quilt or this pillow or the quilt that I made is constructed row by row it's not in block form it's row by row so this pillow will have will have six rows six six of these blocks six of these squares oops now see that's they need to be together as best they can this this pillow will have six by six 
six rows, six of these blocks in each row. Pinch them together and just close. So I'll finish making my squares and then we'll put our pillow rows together. I have here my 30, uh, my 36 background squares with my, my white diagonals sewn onto them. Now we're just going to start constructing this in rows. Now this is important how they go. You have a diagonal going up, okay? So our first row, we're going to be doing six across. Am I in the frame? Yeah. Six across and six down. So what we're going to be doing is grabbing ra fairly randomly, but you want to check, you want to check that your background squares are different colors. Now the original pattern, the original cathedral windows, these would all be white. This thing, this whole thing would be white. And the only color that you would get if you want to do it traditionally is in your frames. So if you by all means are doing it traditionally, you will have cut all of this white. I haven't. I've done my dotted squares. Now, as you can see, I have like what I call my mountains. This mountain is, this is a peak here. Now I'm going to switch it up. I'm making sure that this is red and this is blue. My mountain is going down. I'm just alternating. I'm alternating my mountains. So I have a peak here, a peak here, and then I go down. So you have to figure it out. This is very important. My peaks down here. And then my last one, it, my peaks up there. Okay. So I'm going up, down, up, down, up, down. Now that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Very simple. I'm just going to be doing row by row. All right. I'm not going to complicate my thing by my, by trying to lay it all out. So what I am going to do now is I'm going to go over and with the right, the pretty sides or this, the, the correct side to get together, I'm going to construct two or, well, you can do it the whole row, but I'm going to construct these two together. I'm going to construct these two together with a quarter inch seam. That way, when they're put together, we have this quarter inch seam here. So I'm going, but with, with these two points matching up there, then I'm going to construct these two and then I'm going to put this one here and try to match up that seam right that those um that folded diagonals right there so i'm going to go i'm going to construct two by two for all my mountains there this is my first row i've done these two i've put them together like this and i'm going to chain piece this mountain is going up i only have three peaks so i'm going to be i'm just going to be matching those folded diagonals and I'm going to be doing it a quarter of an inch. I'm leaving my needle down and I'm doing these next two, scratching that together and I'm concentrating on these diagonal diagonals matching. That one's a little off. And then I'm going to cut these apart. Oh, where are my scissors? Oops, my scissors are over there. I'm going to cut these apart. And now I'll construct my first row. So I take these two, and I'm assured that my my uh, my mountain's going up. My next winner that I've established, I'm, I'm going up, down, up. So now I'll take my second set, and now it's down at the bottom that I'm going to be matching those diagonals. Uh, to the best of my ability, it's fine. Again, this is where I think if you're, and I've axed it slightly. This is where I guess if you're absolutely precise, your your these intersections will be fantastic. I'm not even pinning, so I'm not absolutely precise, but it's all good. So I have up, down, up, down, and then I fold up my my last two, and I can I can be assured that I'm going down, up, okay? So now, put this pretty sides together, all of the white, sort of trying, 
it's just going to go because you're, they're just four, your, your four inch squares are pretty good. I do back stitch a little bit, quarter, quarter inch seam. I have my quarter inch seam, my quarter inch foot. And here is my first row. Here's my first row. Now it doesn't look anything right now. <laughs> doesn't look anything right now, but it will. Now I'm going to continue. I'm going to go press these. I'm going to go press these um, the, um, one way. So I'm going to go press these. I'm going to set my seam. I'm going to go over and I'm going to iron that. And I'm going to press that there. I'm going to press this one way. My next row, I'm going to press the other way. So I'm going to go over, I'm going to press these, and our first row is done. And then I will continue all my rows. 